Hey, what's up? My name's Tate. I've been working in the coffee industry for about six years as a barista, a coffee tech, and currently as a firmware engineer. And this has turned into my COVID project. This is my rocket apartamento. So I've had a lot of people ask me about what I've done to it and then the kind of the design process I've gone through. But today I just want to do an overview of what I've done to this thing and all the mods starting from the outside, the inside, and I'll show what sort of espresso shots I can do with this thing. So let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing I wanted to touch on was this dual pressure gauge right here. So as standard, it just has one pressure gauge for the steam boiler, which I don't find very handy. And luckily enough, this size hole and the fittings on it are essentially identical to a Linea Classic, which has a dual pressure gauge just like this. And they make generic ones that don't say Lombardzoco on them, like this one. So I popped that on there with no problem, pretty easy. Something that I find extremely necessary on this machine is this temperature gauge. I think all of them are probably just fine. The guy who made it is based in the United States. There's a lot of knockoffs from my understanding. The guy who makes this one is the OG. When you're pulling shots on this thing and you let it sit standby for quite a while, the group tends to get really, really hot. Well, specifically the, the water coming out of it. So it's super handy to know what the temperature is as it's coming out. It can get past boiling. Uh, after just a couple of minutes and this is also super handy for when you're warming up too to know that you're truly fully warmed up Because often people will go off of the pressure in the steam boiler and say that means that's warmed up and Usually it takes a good like 20 minutes after that for the for the water and the group to get up to temperature as well Basically what I'm saying is if you see a youtuber that doesn't flush their group on a machine like this They probably From this angle you can finally see these plexiglass side panels that I put in here in replacement to the uh, the kind of copper plated panels that were in there before it's a really easy swap, um, but once we dig inside, you'll see exactly how I did that. It's a lot simpler than uh, I probably should have done it. Please excuse me while I remove the side panels for the hundredth time. All right, so before we get too excited about what's going on on the inside, um, let's just touch on these side panels. So as you can see, uh, that's just duct tape. Uh, and it's, it's been like that for years, so um, it's working just fine. Originally, there are little bars that kind of go right about here that hold it in place, but obviously I don't get quite as much transparency that way, and no one can really tell if it's duct tape until I do what I'm doing right now. So it works just fine. So if you've ever peeked inside of one of these machines before, you might immediately notice that there's quite a few things that are different on the inside. So let me move this just a little bit to get a closer look. Again, this machine has been doing a really weird rattling sound in the last few months, and I finally figured out that this is probably why. So I'm gonna fix that real quick. From this view, we can see that we have some new solid state relays to drive the pump and the heater. Uh, this board is completely custom. It's running off of an Arduino IoT33, so I can do IoT dashboard kind of stuff. This machine isn't running that currently, but it does have that feature. And you can see that the whole wiring harness is completely redone. Just because of the scope of this project, the original harness just wasn't really gonna cut it. And I really wanted to make sure this was as reversible as possible, so I did not wanna have to buy a whole new harness if I wanted to revert any of this stuff. There's even this stainless steel hose in the replacement of the original plastic one. And back here you can see a flow meter as well, which I actually don't really use because it's kind of tricky to use a combination of a flow meter and a manual brew valve. Um, but it's there, I can use it if I want. It's nice to see flow rates sometimes. I almost forgot to mention, I do have this temperature sensor right here. This is not original. I had to drill and tap a hole in the boiler, which is absolutely terrifying. But that came straight off of a Escasa Dream, I believe and that enables me to do full temperature control, PID control. Um, so that way this thing is truly set to a specific temperature instead of depending off of the pressure stat over here, which yes, it does correlate to temperature, but it's kind of nice to be able to set a specific temperature and not just hope that the pressure that I'm at is at the temperature that I'm at. Okay, so from this side, we have a really clear view of the flow meter, which is just the low pressure going into a gear pump right off of a mod bar. 
uh, the first generation that has the gear pumps. So what this means is you can do whatever pressure you want to brew your espresso at. It's just dependent on whatever voltage you feed to this pump. So it runs off of 24 volts. Um, this thing doesn't typically have 24 volts on it. So there's a big box underneath here. You can kind of see it from the other side. And that is my 24 volt power supply. It's essentially just a five amp off the shelf mean well power supply. It's run exclusively for the pump. We can also see this tube right here, which leads to that double pressure gauge on the front. That means that we can see exactly what the output of the pump is, not necessarily exactly what the pressure at the espresso is, but it's decently close. It'd be kind of tricky to get the pump pressure, especially because really the only place where you can tap that is where this temperature sensor is, and I think that that might be more important. So this works well enough. I can't believe I almost forgot my favorite part, but I have to spin it back around one more time. So again, this is a totally custom board, which means I can basically control this machine any way I want to, being the temperature, the valves, all that stuff. But that also means that I can control the pump in pretty unique ways. And that's what is right here, is I have a linear potentiometer. So by default, what we have is just a switch. And so you flip the switch, it closes the switch, the board knows to turn on the pump, and it just pushes out water. But instead of that digital switch, I actually have an analog potentiometer. So there's this little plunger right here, right there. And as it goes in, it changes voltage. As it goes out, it changes voltage. And this lever is on a cam. And that means I can tap into that voltage on the board and correlate that position on the lever to a specific voltage at the pump, which correlates to pump pressure. So basically I can lift this all the way up, full nine bar, slowly go back down, taper off the pressure, or do whatever crazy profile I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on, let it warm up. I did not have it on right now because it is a nightmare to take apart when it's hot. So I'm going to let it warm up and then we'll run through what it looks like to pull some shots on this thing with the panels off so we can see all the inner workings. I should probably plug it in first. Okay, so the machine's fully warmed up. My group is right at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you might see a little bit of pulsing from my lights right now because the PID is maintaining the temperature that it's set at right now. Uh, so we're ready to pull a shot. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just take a look at what the pump can do. So if I just slowly bring up this lever, we can see on this gauge on the bottom here, I'm only at three bar, but if I lift it all the way up, I push the linear potentiometer in further, you can hear the dental kind of tool sound ring out and I get a lot more pressure. Granted, there's no back pressure right now, so it just maxes out at six bar. Also, like I was mentioning earlier, that brought my group up to like 205 all of a sudden because I have all this hot water that's building up in the boiler. So I really got to flush it quite a bit before I stabilize the water temperature. Yeah, we're coming back up to about 205. Come back down. Now the water in here is right around 200 degrees again. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull a shot. By the way, I'm pulling this light roast Costa Rican. It's, it's pretty good. It was roasted on a bellwether. Shameless plug. Gotta flush the group one more time. What I'm gonna try first, and it's probably my favorite style of pulling a shot, is a blooming espresso, where I'm just gonna put a bit of pressure on there and then just turn off the pump, let some of that pressure back off as sort of a bloom, and then pull back up into full pressure and then maybe just taper off a bit at the end. All right, so full pressure. As we start ramping up, I'm gonna wait until I start seeing a little bit of water coming out, well, coffee come out. And then pump is off but I am still letting a little bit of pressure relieve. And then I'll go back up. You can see I'm kind of coming up to nine bar. And maybe I'll slowly back off around seven, six, 
kill it. That was actually a really big shot, but that's okay. So yeah, that is one sort of profile that you can do. Before I jump to the next profile, the reason I really like that profile is because by letting the puck kind of bloom after that first intrusion of water, it tends to reduce the amount of channeling and I have a little bit more consistency. It just seems to be a lot more forgiving when you let that puck expand and fill up any cracks that might be there. Also, if you're wondering why I have a grinder that's worth almost twice as much as my espresso machine, your grinders are definitely worth the investment. Uh, you can make really great coffee on a really cheap espresso machine if you have a great grinder. Granted, I don't know if I really recommend paying the kind of money that these things retail for. I just got a really good deal on it. So once again, I'm flushing because this boiler is nearly boiling right now, which isn't great. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is quite a bit more traditional. So I want to try and replicate a lever style shot. What that means is I'm going to introduce with just a little bit of low pressure and then ramp up to 12 bar and then slowly taper off as if I'm decompressing a spring all the way back down to about three bar. So I'm just gonna turn on the pump, not introduce too much pressure for now. And then as I'm getting some back pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way up as high as I can. And then slowly taper down. That's kind of what a lever shot is like. Also, it's definitely four o'clock right now and I will not be drinking these, but I can say that lever shots usually have a little bit more body, so that's what you're into. That's the kind of profile you might want to try. So again, that was just an overview of this machine. If there's any details that you want me to dig into, why I made some decisions I made, how I did them, maybe even into the software that I use, shoot me a comment. Or if there's even another machine that you think I should modify or look into the shortcomings, or how they can be improved. I'm happy to make that investment. I love to work on these machines, so let me know.